Hello, beautiful creatives. One of my goals this year in my studio was to use, to test out and try all the unloved art supplies that I have hanging around that I haven't used and to fill up um, my half completed sketchbooks that I have. And I have been really doing well with that. I mean, as you've seen in my videos, I've been pulling out a lot of supplies and trying them out, things that I thought I didn't like, and I've been finding I really have fallen back in love with them. So I have so many sketchbooks that are almost full. I'm really close to filling this Paul Rubens watercolor sketchbook um, that has landscapes in it. I'm really close to filling this, what is this, the Tumu Arta? sketchbook. I, I only have a little bit of that left to go. So that's another one coming up. This one is just my art creations and not much left in that one either. At the rate that I've been filling these lately, uh, these are going to fill quickly. So I need to get to these two full ones. This, uh, this art creations one, this still has a long ways to go. This is the one that I'm working in now. Um, yeah, so this still has a long ways to go on that one. These two are full. I've been doing a lot of, um, this is a cheap Arteza. It's their sketchbook, premium sketchbook, 100 pages. Let's see, what is it? Um, eight and a half inches by 11 inches. I'm looking for the paperweight. Oh, 118 pounds, 175 GM. So, um, I just got these and I I was just going to use them for like abstract stuff, just like really experimenting around. And that actually is what I've been using them for. But I did some, um, I, had, I had to clean up my palette, my Stay Wet palette, because I've decided I can't use it for a while. It really makes me not feel well having that wet palette going all the time. So I started doing some palette cleanup pages and I did, I've been doing some intuitive paintings over on Patreon. This one I did a lie, a full demo of this just being, it was just from paints that I had left over on my palette and I went through the process and it always blows my mind what shows up on the pages. It's just crazy. It's like, where does this imagery come from? but I absolutely love this one. I especially love at the very end, this little artist sitting here showed up with her sketchbook on her lap. That is just crazy. How do things like that happen? So, and it was just there. All I did was outline it with white Posca. So this is a really great demo over on Patreon. And then I did this one, same thing. I had a few paints left on my palette and, um, I just started making marks. I actually started with yellow ochre and I just was like making swirls and lines. And then I saw this swirl in this line and it became a person. And same thing, there was a big swirl here that I think went like that. And that turned into a person. And it, the whole thing turned into this really fun um, painting. So this is probably gonna be a lot of experimenting and a lot of intuitive painting in this book. It's not great paper. It's really absorbent, but I actually like painting on absorbent paper. So um, that is some of the sketchbooks. I have kept my commitment this year to use up art supplies and finish up sketchbooks that I have going. And I'm really pleased with that. I'm pleased with how many sketchbooks I've, I've filled this year. But these two are full. It has taken me forever to get to these. Um, this one I finished on February 27th. This one I finished on, hmm, in December, December 31st. Oh, New Year's Eve, uh, Christmas, no, yeah, New Year's Eve I finished this. Isn't that funny? Um, so this one started out as my gratitude journal. This was my second magic journal. I did one of these, oh, in the summer of 2022, I think, and filmed it for you guys. And then I started another one on September 10th, 23. And I did go for a while doing it. And then I just busted out into using it as more of an expressive 
to express my feelings visually um, instead of using words. So what I'll do is um, I'll go through, I guess I'll, I'll go through these journals and do a talk through first. And then um, if there's time at the end of the video, I'll flip through quickly for those that would rather not have the talking and just see the pages. I'll flip through more quickly and just put that to music. So I think I'll start with this one. My Art Heals Magic Journal. Okay, so I think these gratitude journals are such a great idea. Um, and if you didn't, I'll try to remember to put a link up here um, to show you the one that I did. And I think it was 2022. And um, they just are, they just are really helpful during really difficult times. So what I would do is just take watercolor and paint on the pages and then I would write over it what I was grateful for. Or sometimes I would do it the other way around. I would write with a waterproof marker and then paint over it. This one I can tell I used brusho on. I used brusho here too. But so, you know, nothing complicated. I would just write down what I was grateful for on these painted backgrounds. And it's a really powerful practice. Sometimes I would do something more um, descriptive, like the flowers. Uh, I think this is so pretty, but using, this was using my Paul Rubens watercolors and just, uh, just what I was grateful for that day, even on really, really difficult days. Sometimes I would do two page spreads for a day. And sometimes I would just do it on one day. This was our anniversary, our 32nd year, 32 years of being married. Um, on 921 and let's see, yeah, just more, more gratitude. What happened with this was, you know, if you've been following my channel for a while, you guys know that it's, it's just been a rough go the last few years. So what happened with this, the second time around doing this in a journal started to feel not powerful enough anymore. I really, I'm such a visual person. I felt like I needed to turn to imagery. So what I did was I decided that I would roll this over to just experimental, um, you know, oh, this, for this page, I set an intention. I actually think I filmed this for my patrons. I don't remember, but I think I did. I think I did film this, but I set an intention for this and it was an intuitive painting process that really surprised me um, when it came out, the meaning that came out. This was another intention painting that I did. And then just some abstracts, just really needing to pour feelings onto paper and not um, think about using words. You know, sometimes it's hard. It's when things are difficult to, to actually move into words because I think they just make you think about your problems more. This one says, yes, I am hurt, but I'm also screaming mad. This was a really powerful uh, page spread to do. And then this was collage, just relaxing and making some collage, some playful work, just some more intuitive work. Just taking ink. I think, yeah, I think I just took ink and scribbled on one page and then maybe folded the page over and did some more scribbling. I really enjoy doing that. This is collage. A couple of pieces of collage. I really love the neutral colors in that. More collage. I think, oh, these were collage papers that I made in a video. And my mind, my brain fog is so bad. I can never, oops, I can never remember if it is YouTube or Patreon that I do these videos on. But one or the other, I did some collage paper videos and then used them in this journal. Just, um, is this acrylic? Looks like acrylic painting. And this feels like gouache. Actually, this might be acrylic too, just thinned down. I really love using acrylic on absorbent papers. I think it helps them come out flatter and less shiny. And I don't know, there's just something about having that first layer of paint absorbed 
instead of riding on a slippery coat of gesso. I Years ago, I used to only paint acrylics on gessoed paper. Um, and for me, it was just like the only way to go. But now I really prefer to paint on ungessoed paper and just let the paper absorb that first layer. I think you get some really nice marks that way. It's really great for some dry brush marks. Just some fountain pen sketches. Gosh, you can really kind of tell my mood here, can't you? Wow. Oh, yeah. Um, these were actually some master studies, but it looks so much like my boy Nico, who I lost last year. Uh, this looks like Neo Colors. Looks like more Neo Colors. This was after uh, an artist named Isabella Cotier. Cotier. Another dog. I love this one. I really do. I, w I should do this into a painting. I really like that a lot. More drawings with the fountain pen. I actually really fell in love with the fountain pen last year. I had all different colors. I was using it constantly. I just fell in love with it. And then I kind of stopped using it. So I need to get back to that. Just some fun pastel drawings. I think this was just a picture I found on Pinterest. More pastel. Another pastel. This actually, this one might be Neo Color. Yeah, I think these two are Neo Color. And I think these two are oil pastels. But maybe not. Maybe they're all Neo Color. Christmas time, 12 to, oh, that was Christmas Eve. Another one of that woman with the, oh, this was the multicolored pencil um, that I got for Christmas. That is such a fun pencil. I know some of my patrons have gotten that and posted that they've been drawing with it. This, there was a bunch of them. There's a bunch of different color assortments in the pack that I got. And um, these were all done with different pencils from that set. Really fun. I love these drawings. Yeah, still playing with those pencils. I want to get back into doing some of these kind of figures. I really love these, these distorted figures. I really enjoy creating that kind of art. I'd like to do some paintings of those. And then this was, I'm pretty sure this was Paul Rubin's um, Payne's Gray watercolor. Just using one color. This uh, probably was the same watercolors, Paul Rubin's. There's that dog again. He looks so much like my Nico. A little puppy sleeping in a dog bed. Definitely was into painting dogs at that time. And then the last few pages, I always, in all my sketchbooks, I save for swatching. Oh, these were, oh, these were swatching out those multicolor pencils. So you can see each one had a little bit of a different color theme. And then that was just sort of scribbling around with them. So that is sketchbook number one. Okay, and this is sketchbook number two. So this one was 521.23 to 227.24. And I think there's a, yes, there's a, the beginning of this is a lot of Emma Carlyle's uh, drawing sessions. I really miss those sessions. I would love to get my energy back um, enough to take that on. But right now, I can barely manage YouTube and Patreon, so I can't. This was gouache, and this was definitely one of Emma's sessions. This was just, I was scribbling, and then I think I just turned it into flowers, like Queen Anne's lace or something. This was one of Emma's drawing sessions. I would probably be so rusty if I went back now to do her drawing club, but oh, it's such a fun, fun thing to do. That was Emma's.
that was the same thing, another picture of the deer, and I just could not get the shape right in that second one. This was the same, same session, I think, doing the animals. A gouache landscape, just really simple, almost abstracted landscape. Um, I'm not sure what this was. If this was the uh, liquid charcoal, maybe? Palette knife. This was Senex gouache and doing palette knife work with it. This was some more Senex gouache. This was a demo I did, a demo video. This might have been a demo video too. I really should write down whether the demos were for Patreon or YouTube. These, I love these little landscapes, these little taped off abstract landscapes. Um, I would like to go back to doing some more of that. That's the trouble when I put my sketchbooks on the shelf, I tend to forget what I've done in them, but these are a lot of fun. <laughs> Just a funny pen thing. This was from one of Emma's sessions. This was 20 minutes on that painting. This was, I think, I don't remember if this was from one of Emma's sessions or not. Oh, palette cleanup pages I never went back to. I'll be darned. I like the color combination. I just never went back to it. Oh, this was another emotional process painting. Um, it's sort of like this different stages of grief. You know, you're, when something really hard happens in relationships, you know, whether they're family or um, friends or whatever, you tend to like have this grief and then you tend to go through this angry stage and then you tend to go through this empowered stage where you're like, stop, no more, not going to take that kind of treatment. Oh, this was after my little Nico died. It, I think this was called the dreamer's dream. And this was done in my art nest with um, Milang watercolors. And this one I was going to do a painting of, making notes. It says, make her smaller. This time the little dog is in bed. And that looks so much like my Nico. Oh, my Nico again. On this time the bed is flying. And she I had a note to make her taller. Make the bed higher and smaller and make her taller. I never did the painting, but... I thought I was, oh, this was my Christmas painting. Where are the wise men? Bethlehem 2023. Um, that ended up being a really beautiful painting. My little Nico, he looks like he's limping there. He looks sad in that one. Again, I was thinking of doing a painting of this, but I never did. My little Nico again. He was showing up in all my work. Uh, these were some master studies after Pierre Boncompagne. Bon I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name. Boncompagne. Um, yeah, just some master drawings. This was after him too. This was after Milton Avery. I love both of their works. I love their work. And I would like to do this as a painting very much. I would like to do this as a painting too. Mm, I need to keep my sketchbooks out and this is, I like this. This was with graph tint. One of my viewers gave me some graph tint and I'm pretty sure that's what that was. Some graph tint, a, a palette of graph tint colors and they're so neutral and lovely. I think that's what that was. Just fooling around with portraits. This was a master study. Uh, probably of one of those artists that I mentioned earlier. Let's see, choosing colored pencils for plein air and art nest. The ones with red circles did not make the cut. <laughs> That's funny. It's a nice selection of colors though. It was for winter colors. I remember doing this for more muted winter colors. And I used them on this. This was watercolor and then colored pencil. Keep checking to make sure I'm still in the frame here. This was this is a type of painting that I really love doing, and I should do more of it. Where you paint your background and then you sort of carve out, 
So you can just do a multicolored background. It's really great for those palette cleanup pages. And then just take, I take like a Stabilo um, chalk pencil and soft pastel pencil and do out my drawing and then go over the background with like white uh, gesso or white acrylics. And I really like that look. This was actually a painting of my shadow. I was looking down, so it obviously didn't have feet in reality. I put the feet on, but it was a photograph I had taken of my shadow. This was testing out, I'm not sure what this was, because those colors are pretty cool. Some of them are kind of glittery. And I didn't date this either. I like this though, I'm not sure what this was. It, it definitely looks like I was testing out some kind of materials. Not sure. This, oh, this is the red chair out in our front yard and the uh, hydrangea bush all dried out for the winter. Ooh. Usually I use Dorland's, Dorland's cold wax to coat my pages, but um, I haven't been doing that because of this. It does have a solvent smell. So I haven't been doing that with my pages anymore. This one I really like, this winter woods painting. It has so much energy in it. I really enjoy that one. This one I like too. This was just Caran d'Ache. I don't think I used anything else in it, but just a really crazy fun. I did this in my art nest. Just a really fun, fun way to spend some time. This is probably Liquitex Basics paints. And I really like this. I love the colors in it. It's really nice. Really nice winter landscape. Love the setting sun and the direction of, that the clouds are bringing into the painting. Those brush strokes. There's a nice flow in this because the shadow sort of brings you up to the tree. These brush strokes, strokes keep you in the painting. They bring you back into the painting. And then this line sort of brings you back around to the trees. So you sort of do this full circle while you're looking around the painting. Um, oh, these are the multicolored pencils again. They really are quite fun to work with. This was, oh, a page. Yeah, this page got all messed up. I was making a page for the giveaway. And so I ended up repainting it. This was the, I've been doing um, giveaways of art supplies on my Patreon. And uh, this was the announcement for that really adorable uh, Chiaome watercolor palette. I don't know where mine is right now, but I love that little palette. Yeah, I did a giveaway on this little palette on Patreon. And it's such a sweet little palette. This pops out, has a color chart, or you can take this out and use that for mixing. I love it. Such a sweet palette. Really fun. Anyways, that was the giveaway. This was just the directions I flipped through and it had, had the directions. And I've done a couple of other giveaways. I gave away a really big set of oil pastels. Oh, this was planning for my full moon cards. That's right, yeah, these were the drawings for those full moon cards. And I'm halfway through on those. I have um, six done. So I only have six more full moons to go. That was a nice project. I did get sick of it because you know me, I have trouble sticking to things, but this one came out really nice. I ended up changing up the drawing and there's two animals underground. I think there's a rabbit and I forget what the other animal is under there, a mouse maybe? But uh, yeah, I gotta go back. This was a good one. This came out really good, worm moon. Yeah, I, I got to get back to that someday, get back to those. Am I ever going to remember that the rest of the drawings are in this sketchbook? Beaver Moon, that was one of my favorite ones. I love the way that painting came out. Yeah, these are just more plans. I wonder what that was about. Love this. Love this. I really, you know, I filmed this. I think, 
I know I filmed part of it. I don't know if I filmed the whole thing and I've never used that footage. I should pop that footage up on Patreon at some point. Um, yeah, I just love the way that came out. Um, oh, this is... Huh, I shouldn't even be showing that because that's something I was going to do with my patrons. But I don't know if I'm going to do that now. So this is... Um, just some loose hydrangeas, moo cow. <laughs> I like that. I love this guy. He's so funny. These are fun to do. This was the same idea as I showed you before. I painted the background and then I went over and this is watercolor. So I painted um, a background with assorted colors and then went over it with um, a really heavy coat. Oh, you know, this is the, this is the Japanese watercolors, the Kuretake, because I can tell because it's shiny and the Paul Rubens one, the watercolors don't get shiny, but then just kind of carved out these shapes uh, with no, I, the only drawing I did was with a watercolor brush. I didn't draw anything out. That's a really fun exercise to do. This was, oh, this was explore, my first exploration with the, um, Mungio uh, water soluble oil pastels that Michael gave me. Are these pages glued together or stuck together? Huh? Well, they're not coming apart. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Huh? That's weird. This almost seems like I glued them together. But anyways, that was my first experience with those. Um, and then this I also did with those. And I have been having a lot of fun with those. They are an item that I use a lot. Again, really love this loose floral bouquet. Oh, the tiger. Yeah, this is, oh, this is the Cooey Locks oil pastels. This is the pastels, the Light Wish pastels that I gave, gave away. Um, and they just were, they were, I was trying to work over them and they were so soft. I was making a hot mess with them. I think I did another, another one that came out better. Yeah, this was also with those and it came out better. <laughs> really fun. This reminds me of like Emily Powell type stuff with the words. Oh, these, oh, these were what we did on Patreon. That's right. We did timed tiger drawings on Patreon. I can't remember anything these days. My brain is so fogged. But yeah, that's what these were. They were timed. I love this guy. This is Sad Tiger, we were calling him on Patreon because he has such sad eyes. I think this was Liquitex Basics on this. Uh, this was, there were two, oh, this was two one minute drawings. So I did one in yellow. And then I did another one over it, and each one was one minute. And he's actually my favorite. You know, the fastest ones are often my favorite ones. This was a two-minute tiger, and everybody posted in the Patreon chat their tigers, and it was so much fun seeing them. This is a three-minute tiger, three-minute tiger. I think that's the fun thing about my Patreon is because I'm such a, I'm an artist that bounces around from so many different things. So it's not like every week we do this or every week we do that. Like we are constantly doing different stuff on there. I'm constantly doing different types of demos, talking about different kinds of um, art supplies. This looks like it's those Chinese watercolors and maybe some of those oil pastels. This was just, a, I think this was just intuitive, uh, acrylic. I don't think, um, yeah, I think I was just, I love this too. I, li I really love intuitive work. There's just something so special about it. This was, uh, this was done after, there were, there's photos on Pinterest and um, they are the headdresses that were inspired by the Royal Ballet, uh, the animalesque, I think it's called, animalesque headdress, inspired by the Royal Ballet. And the photographs are stunning. So I thought I would draw 
and paint one of them. And I really, really like that. It's so interesting though. My social media audience didn't care for it. I think they like my funkier work better um, because they, I, it got very few comments, but I think she's so gentle and soft and so pretty. And then this one, um, I, I don't remember if I filmed this or not. This was one that I did and I totally, she was sort of looking up in the photograph and her, her head got askew and it looked awful. So then I just took, I painted out where it had gone wrong and, and repainted her face. And it came out good in the end, I think, but so funny. Just drawing loose still lifes, trying to get some maybe compositions. Oh, I like that idea of the open bird cage and the bird. Yeah. Hmm. What I need to do is go through and take notes on different things or maybe even photos from certain sketchbooks that I might want to do as paintings later on because I end up putting them on the shelf and forgetting, forgetting everything I said that I want to revisit. So this is the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s. Oh, I did a video on this. It's comparing the Caran d'Ache with the Mungio water soluble oil pastels. There is a video on that. Um, I can try to remember to put a link. I think it's, if it's on YouTube, I can put a link. If it's on Patreon, I can't put a link, but, um, yeah, comparing, I, I compared the two and talked about the texture of each of them, how they were different when you added water. I really have enjoyed those Mungio water soluble oil pastels. I honestly didn't know this is more of that set. Honestly didn't know. And this was an intuitive painting I did. There was a palette cleanup page here. And this was an intuitive painting I did with these Mungio water soluble pastels, just using them kind of as paint. And you know what's really interesting? Here's that figure again that showed up in the other intuitive painting with the person's head and face, their back coming down, their arm coming over, and the big sketchbook. It's almost the same image that showed up. That is really interesting. I mean, it's flipped. It's a mirror image of how it came out in the other sketchbook, but I gotta grab that and see if I can find it. Cause it really reminds me, it's not the full image that's in this one, but it's so similar. That is crazy. So this one's going this way and this one doesn't have the leg down here, although it may have, I covered, I covered this up with this blue streak. But look at that, the tilted head, the back coming down, the arm, and the big sketchbook here. I don't know if it's showing, but this line of the beige does come down here and here like a big, like it does in here. That's pretty funky. Intuitive, intuitive painting blows my mind. You just, the stuff that comes up sometimes, it's from your subconscious. Like I feel like you connect to spirit, God, the universe, whatever you're comfortable calling it, I really feel like you sort of download images or if you would, if you're more comfortable looking at it, that you connect to your higher self within you and you bring up images that are within you. But sometimes amazing stuff comes up during intuitive painting. And I've been doing a lot more of it lately. And this also was just playing, there was a palette cleanup page and I was just playing with covering parts of it up with gesso. Just so, no, maybe it was white acrylic, thin down white acrylic. And then the last few pages are my um, swatching pages. I saw a video where somebody was using Wallace Seymour watercolors. Um, oh, it was Jeanette Phillips. She does these really loose uh, water floral watercolors. And um, she got these, oh, I want those Wallace Seymour but they're in the UK. I don't think there's a US distributor. Um, they sell them in the UK. Anyways, they're, it, look them up. If you're in the UK, look them up. It's, it, it, it's Wallace Seymour, but I think they've changed the name to Pip, P-I-P Seymour, but you will find them if you just look up Wallace Seymour. Um, absolutely breathtaking watercolors. Oh. Okay, so that is the two sketchbooks. 
And um, if you're going to jump off here, I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll look forward to hearing from you in the comments. And what I will do now is just flip through these again, but more quickly. And um, when I do editing, I'll put music in the background. So the first part of this journal is a gratitude journal. So I will probably flip through the gratitude pages quite quickly and just show you any that have a more defined painting on them and then um, just move on to the rest of the journal. Trees are in green, the ocean is gray, sky is a vague blue, come my way. My room is a mess, it could use a hand. My favorite TV shows are capturing. I know I must get it right, I must get back in the fight. This can't be a surprise. I think I'll let it slide. I'm
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. I hope you're able to hit your sketchbooks this week and um, have a really happy, healthy, creative week and I will see you next week or I will see you over on Patreon. Take care. Bye-bye.